Hello, my name is Ryan and today I'll be showing you guys how to create a robot AI in Unity that knows how to do parkour. So I'm a little bit sick, so excuse my voice or just a cough every once in a while, but I thought this was cool enough stuff to do a tutorial right away. It's kind of a showcase also. Um, so this tutorial takes off directly after Unity's official mechanism tutorial. It's 40 minutes long, so it's a little bit lengthy. But it's a good learning experience, and I recommend doing the tutorial rather than just going in the project files and finding tutorial done. But tutorial done is where this tutorial is going to start. So, uh, first things first, we are going to delete some stuff that's a little bit, it's going to get in our way throughout the tutorial. So we're going to delete all the laser stuff. It didn't work for me anyway because I don't have IK because I don't have Unity Pro. Then we're going to duplicate our robot and this right here is going to be our AI character so we're going to rename it Robot AI and then we're going to do some more house cleaning stuff and delete the look at position underneath the head on the robot AI and delete the camera position above the robot. So the reason we did that is we're going to utilize this third person camera script to be able to switch views between our robot and our player in real time. So actually I'm just going to move these back a little bit both of them so we could get a better view of what's going on and next thing is we're going to allow our player to be detected by giving him an aspect so you have all these uh, sights, smells, um, sounds but we're giving him a visual aspect and name it player so he can be detected and then next we're going to go to rain and create AI underneath our robot AI. So we do not need the obstacle avoidance collider. I never really got that to work for me ever. I think I'm going to figure it out soon but we do not need that today. And I'm going to move the sensor up from his feet into just his uh, midsection there. And next thing is we're going to start our behavior tree for this guy. So uh our behavior tree is going to be called robot AI and the default root is always called root. So now we can create this tree by going to rain behavior tree behavior tree editor and now I'm just going to um, partner this with the hierarchy up here so we can switch back and forth and create a new behavior tree and name it the same thing as what we said right in this area here so robot AI um, so this is just a started behavior tree and then this is a sequencer a sequencer goes through its children until one of them fails and then starts back from the top so we're going to create a leaf that detects the player so go to actions detect and then we'll just name this detect player this does not matter um, sensor here we're using the default sensor that I just named sensor it's the um, it's detecting the aspect player which if you remember from two seconds ago uh, we just attached it to the player and then once it detects the player it's going to be create a variable called player position and then we're going to use this in the next part of our behavior tree and the next part once it detects it is um, going to oh, sorry about that go to actions mechanism and then move so what this does is it gives input to mechanism or the animator controller so it knows what animations to play. 
So our move target is going to be the variable that we set in detect player called player position. So player position here. I don't know why the move speed is a negative. Um, I'll figure that out later. The damp time is how long it takes for Mechanim and uh, Rain Indy to communicate. So a higher damp time smoothens it out. Speed. So right here we're just defining our input parameter things that you can find in your um, state machine. Um, so here we're just going to use speed and direction. So all we have to type it, all we have to do is type in the uh, name of the parameter. So here we have speed. It would help if I put the right, right amount of ease. And then turn angle is going to name it di direction. So that's pretty much done here in this area. Our behavior tree is done. So this is a sequencer. So it's going to keep on detecting, trying to detect a player until it does. And then once it does, it's going to move to the player. So I'm going to put these on debug so it tells you in the console when those actions are taking place. And let's just hit play and see if this works. Um, yes, it, no, it did not. Hmm. All right, so I fixed our um, little problem here. It was just something I forgot to tell you guys to do is we have to delete this bot control script because that's the script that allows the key inputs to move the controller which we do not want and for now we're going to unclick the animation triggers and I hit this little bug we had the words direction here which should allow it to turn and just for the record I find the mechanism tilting mechanic when it turns to be a little bit overrated and anyway um, it's best without it so I just kept it on speed and uh, let me just show you real quick what I'm talking about so I'll disable the actually no I'll just show you right here I'm gonna go to the player um, mechanism going forward and turning right is blends perfectly and going forward and turning left blends perfectly but once you go right to left quickly there's a little skip there and you can tell very much when the AI skips it's like exaggerated and it happens a lot so it's better if we just take direction out of there and for some reason it just wasn't working a second ago anyway um so next up is we want the AI to move around the environment somewhat intelligently and we're going to use waypoints for this um, I like waypoints a lot more than the recast for many different reasons but the most important reason now is with the waypoints you can do one waypoints I mean one way waypoints so what we're going to do is we're going to put a waypoint up here and so there's a one way down but the um, AI knows it can't go up so we're going to go in the path manager right here go to use waypoint collection and we're going to create a new waypoint collection and then add a waypoint. So um, there are many tutorials and the uh, documentation shows you how to do the waypoints but it's very self-explanatory. You keep on clicking add a connected waypoint and then you can shift click and select two and then collect selected waypoints and that'll um, connect two waypoints and here you have this uh, triangle so here let me show you what I was talking about with the one waypoints the one way waypoints is you can create a waypoint up here then create a waypoint down here and select both of them and find this button cycle connection between points and what this will do is it will cycle it between multi-directional 
one direction going one way and one direction going the other way and it is very difficult to tell which direction is going by these line segments it is impossible and I complained about this and they said they uh, they'll think about fixing it in a future update which is really nice of them but what I did figure out is if you select one of them it'll tell you which direction it's going in so if I select this the lines here it's telling you that it's going in this direction because if I select this there's no line there because there's no connection between here and here the connection is between this point and that point so that's how you can tell so the one-way direction is going down here so let me open up the scene where I uh, save where I have all the waypoints set up so here um, this is completely waypointed I have two different waypoints set up they're just two different tests this is much more simpler and I'm slowly making it more complicated and then the red one it I started really complicated and then I'm going backwards um, just to see which uh, method is best so see here you I have the uh, one-way waypoints um, going downwards and right here I have another one-way down here and also in the other direction so so if you remembered from the unity mechanism tutorial is you have all these jump triggers and what this does is it um, it starts a sequence of animation events that makes it look like a realistic fall and roll. So what I did is I made I resized them and put them in better areas because they're the area the um, locations of them before weren't really in the best of spots. And go to your robot AI and click animation triggers. So now the robot AI will use the animation triggers and it will override the rain AI usage just for a split second for the animations all to work. So here I have the player here, I have the AI here, the game is maximized on play just making sure. So I can switch between these two because I set up the look at position and camera position and now I'm going to trigger the sensor that detects me and he'll run after me but that's not the cool part so now I'm viewing the AI's point of view and I'm going to run up here and activate one of the animation triggers and he does everything accordingly I was very surprised that there is no tweaking to be done and the um, and the AI uses the triggers perfectly but turns out it did so um, right when I realized this, I realized the potential of the system working together. So I got really excited and wanted to make a tutorial about it. So he's using the red waypoints and he's moving around pretty intelligently. And he is keeping up. So he is using Mechanim, which gives the speed input. So not only can he run, but he can also walk. Uh, let's just, uh, yeah, you can see he's walking now. And once again, I turned off the um, leaning by not putting in the direction parameter. And I think it looks a lot better. So here I'm on the player. And I'm just going to show you one cool part up here. And as you can see, he follows me perfectly. So that's pretty much the tutorial. I want to show here today. In the future, I'm going to mess around with his behavior tree and make give him a path that he walks around and then once he detects players he's going to run after him. And also I'm going to lower these prop hurdles, then create a little script that makes the character the AI, sorry, do this little jump here once he gets near him. This jump right uh, here. So that will be a future tutorial pretty soon, and thanks for watching, and see you guys later. Keep on making video games, and thanks to Rain, Rain Indy for creating a free AI solution.